In this video, we'll introduce the concept of the stalk. Here is a wing moving through the air. The wing is moving to the left, and because it's moving to the air, it's creating lift and drag. The airflow over the wing is smooth, and this is what we call laminar flow. Here we've increased the angle of attack, the angle of the wing with the airflow. The wing is still moving in the same direction, but because of the increased angle of attack, the lift has increased, and so has the drag. If we increase the angle of attack above about 15 degrees, the wing will stall. The airflow breaks away from the wing and becomes turbulent. When this happens, the lift is significantly reduced and the drag is significantly increased. Once the angle of attack is reduced, the airflow returns to laminar flow and the stall has ended. The key point is that the stall is caused by a high angle of attack, not the airspeed. Let's see how a stall looks in practice. The pilot pulls back on the stick, raising the nose into a stall. The glider is now stalled and descends rapidly. The pilot holds the stick back, holding the glider in the stall. To recover, the pilot pushes the stick forward, lowering the nose and waiting for the airspeed to return before returning to normal flight. There are nine symptoms of the stall that you should be aware of. Stall recognition is an important skill for a glider pilot. Not all the symptoms of the stall will appear every time, and not all the symptoms of the stall occur exclusively when stalling. Therefore, it's important to be aware of all nine and be able to build up a mental picture to indicate whether you are or aren't stalling at any one time. One. A nose high attitude. A nose high attitude suggests the wing is in a high angle of attack and therefore at or close to the stall. The one notable exception to this is in the winch launch where you'll be climbing at a much steeper angle but the wing is not stalled. 2. The stick fully back or close to the backstop. To maintain the glider in a nose high attitude the stick will have to be almost fully back. If you're flying with the stick near or on the backstop, you may be flying in or close to the stall. 3. Low airspeed. If you're in a nose high attitude or in the stall, you'll be low on airspeed. 4. Low wind noise. At low airspeeds, the wind noise is noticeably quieter. If everything goes quiet in the glider, you may have just stalled. 5. High rate of descent. In the stall, the wing produces significantly less lift, so if you're suddenly encountering very high descent rates, you may have stalled the glider. 6. Buffet. Due to the turbulent air flowing over the wings, the glider can vibrate during the stall. 7. Reduced aileron authority. Due to the low airspeed, the ailerons become ineffective and you'll be able to move the stick left and right quite dramatically without much effect on the glider's roll rate. 8. Nose drop. Some gliders will violently drop the nose at the stall. It's important to note here that after a nose drop, the glider can still be stalled. And therefore you still need to apply the recovery action of pushing the stick forward. This can be highly counterintuitive when you're in a steep dive to need to push the stick forward. This is why stall recognition is so important because in this state the glider is descending rapidly and will not recover without the recovery action. 9. Wing drop. In some cases one wing will stall before the other. This means that the wing that is stalled produces a lot less lift than the wing that isn't. This causes the glider to roll, and this can start a spin, which we'll talk about in another video. In summary, in this introduction to the stall, we've identified that the stall is caused by a high angle of attack, that there are nine symptoms of the stall, which may or may not all be present during a stall, and that will vary from glider type to glider type, and that the stall recovery 
in all circumstances is to ease the stick forward, wait for the airspeed to return and recover from the dive into normal flight.